What do these pliers, this pair of scissors and the Eiffel Tower have in common? All three, sooner or later, get rusty. We're sure, right? So why is the Eiffel Tower more than 130 years after its construction? Not that brownish orange color typical of rust. Yes, in other words, why isn't it rusting away? Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. The Eiffel Tower was completed in 1889 when Paris hosted the World's Fair. The goal was to leave the whole world in absolute awe at the sight of what was the tallest tower of its time. Over 300 meters in height, constructed with four enormous lattice beams that flare out at the base and seamlessly come together at the top. It was a truly incredible feat of engineering, a symbol of modernity and cutting-edge technology, obviously for its time. For it to come to fruition, though, not only top-notch engineers and architects were needed, but also the right construction materials. It had to be an exceptionally durable material, but one that was also flexible and lightweight. And what could be better than iron? Right, too bad though that iron, like a many other metals, is susceptible to corrosion and to rusting in particular. That's exactly why, at first, the Eiffel Tower was supposed to be a temporary installation ready to be taken down after just 20 years before it could be consumed by rust. Gustave Eiffel himself, the engineer in charge of the project, said that identifying and halting the spread of rust was indeed the biggest challenge for its longevity. Rust, you see, isn't merely a cosmetic issue. In extreme cases, it can even cause the whole structure to collapse. So then the question is, why is the Eiffel Tower still standing after more than a century? As basic as it might sound, the secret to its longevity is all in its maintenance. The only way to effectively prevent rust from damaging the tower, according to Gustave, was to carry out thorough and comprehensive maintenance every seven years. Yes. So, for well over a century now, about every seven years, a dedicated team of specialized painters strap on their harnesses and climb the tower to meticulously paint hundreds of meters of iron beams, obviously with rust-proof paint. Today, just like a century ago, this practice is done exclusively by hand. First, you've got to carefully scrape away the old paint, then give the surface a good clean, and after that, you can add a coat of paint, rust-proof paint. This mixture is spread all over the metal surface, forming a very thin layer that shields the tower from the air's moisture, thus slowing down the rusting process. How long do you think it takes to give the entire Eiffel Tower a fresh coat of paint? To complete the process, it takes around 60 tons of paint and 15 to 18 months, during which time, obviously, the tower remains open to visitors. That's exactly why, when we visit the Eiffel Tower, we might just come across a crew of painters hanging off the metal beams, carefully brushing paint across each and every surface of the tower. This, at least, is what should happen under normal circumstances. Unfortunately, though, because of the COVID emergency and other delays, the maintenance of the Eiffel Tower has been on hold for several years. Way too many, and a few days ago, you might have heard about a strike organized by tower employees blocking access to the monument. Why are they doing that? Precisely because of the poor maintenance. They're denouncing a never-before-seen state of disrepair. There are rust spots, widespread cracks, and malfunctioning passenger and freight elevators. In short, if the first question posed in the video was why isn't the Eiffel Tower rusting away, well, the truth is that it actually is riddled with rust, and in a big way. And if care is not taken and a regular maintenance schedule is not followed, the tower could obviously be compromised. Now, why is rust considered such a significant problem? And exactly what does the rusting process involve? I'd say we'd better call in Dana for this little digression into chemistry. Here I am! Well, the reaction that effectively turns iron into rust is one in which iron donates some of its electrons to the oxygen present in the air. So we've got electrons moving from the iron to the oxygen. Well, when there's a transfer of electrons from one chemical species to another, it's what's called an oxidation-reduction reaction. The substance that gives up electrons oxidizes, the iron, and the one that receives electrons gets reduced, the oxygen. 
Now, to make this electron transfer occur, you need water. The source of the water might be rain, but even the moisture present in the air will suffice. So what happens? Upon contact with moisture, the iron in the Eiffel Tower loses its electrons, which are taken up by oxygen molecules, forming ferric oxide and ferric hydroxide, or in other words, rust. But there are two problems. The first is that the oxygen in the air can even find its way into the tiniest micro cracks in the iron. And the second thing is that when rust forms, it expands. So, when moisture and oxygen penetrate into the pores or micro cracks, rust starts forming on the inside. This rust expands and creates further cracks, and these cracks expose more iron to moisture, which means more rust will form and in turn expand. Basically, it's a vicious cycle. So in plain English, it's like rust is eating away at the iron. But don't think iron is the only metal that rusts. Actually, it happens to almost all metals except for the so-called noble metals, which are called noble precisely because they don't rust. We're talking about particularly precious and valuable metals like gold, silver, and platinum. Even copper, the material that, for instance, the Statue of Liberty is made of, is subject to oxidation. Notably, when copper oxidizes, a greenish patina forms on its surface. Sure enough, what color is the Statue of Liberty? Yes, it's green. When it was built, though, before it oxidized, it was copper red, like those two-cent coins, just to give you an idea. And speaking of changing colors, we take it for granted today that the Eiffel Tower has always been the same color, that distinctive Eiffel Tower bronze, but actually, over the years, it has changed color several times. Just imagine that when it was first built, it was Venetian red. Later, it became ochre, then yellow-brown, red-brown, and finally, in 1968, its present color was chosen. It's not a uniform color all over, though. There are actually three different shades, ranging from the darkest at the bottom to the lightest at the top. Why? To give the construction a more streamlined visual impact. These are the little things you find out when you decide to dig deeper into a topic. But wait, there's more. Interestingly, Word has even gotten out that for the 2024 Olympics, they're planning to paint the tower gold. Just picture it, this big golden ingot towering over the center of Paris. Oh my gosh. Yes, maybe it's a bit egomaniacal, but let's face it, quite stylish. Unfortunately, though, it's only five months before the Olympics begin, and due to all the delays we've discussed, work has yet to start. Which is why it's highly likely this sober and scintillating proposal will never see the light of day. Everything needs continuous care and constant maintenance. Even those things that, as symbols of modernity and cutting-edge technology, we assume are perfect just as they are. The most difficult thing about a major work isn't its construction, but its maintenance, a wise man once said. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video all the way through. I'll catch you for the next episode right here on Geopop Everyday Science. Bye.